What's up, everybody? Mr. Forrest back with a brand new preaching series. Brand new preaching series for Epic Bible Fun. For those of you that could not make it to Epic Bible Fun at Calvary this year, or maybe you did make it and you just want to relive the awesome memories. I'm starting a new series called Ed and Margot Go to New York City. It is a five part series, and you guys are going to love it. Let's jump right into it. Margaret Schellenberger was a comic book nerd. She loved all things superhero. She loved Ant-Man and Wasp. She loved Spider-Gwen and Spider-Man. She loved Batman and Iron Man and Hulk. She loved them all, but it wasn't just the comic books. She had the posters on her wall. She had the t-shirts in her closet. She had the, the cartoons in her library. She even had socks with little capes on them. Every day, Margaret wished that superheroes were real. She wished that she would be in trouble, like spinning out of control in a car, or a big wall would be about to fall on her, and she would uh, a superhero would fly in and rescue her and whisk her away to Italy or France or the magical fairy princess land of Oklahoma. Often she wished that she was a superhero as well. She wished that she could fly. She wished that she could move faster than a speeding bullet, or she was more powerful than a locomotive. She wished she had web shooters in her wrist and she could whip around the city. But she was just a normal kid who lived a normal life. Most of all, she liked to read her comics, and she didn't like being around people, and she was shy, and she didn't want to talk to people. She just wanted to be in her room, and her parents worried about her because she wasn't out playing with the other kids. They tried to get her to go outside and play, but she just wanted to stay inside. So finally, they insisted. They said, Margaret, you're going to join an after-school activity. Now, she could pick whichever one she wanted, but she had to join one. She looked up at the list. Ugh, none of these fit me. I'm not smart enough to be on the chess team. I'm not athletic enough to play lacrosse. I'm not coordinated enough to roller skate. And then she saw it. Underwater sweater knitting. She loved being in the water. She was already good at knitting. And it was perfect because she didn't have to socialize. I mean, who talks to people while they're underwater? It was the perfect sport for her, and she was good at it. In fact, her whole team was good. They made it to regionals, and they won regionals. And by winning regionals, they won a spot to compete at the National Underwater Sweater Knitting Tournament this summer in New York City. Every day, Margaret would go to school, and then she'd go to underwater sweater knitting practice. Then she'd go home and read comics. She'd go to school, underwater sweater knitting, then go home and read comics every day until school ended. Summer finally hit and her summer schedule was a little bit different. She just wanted to stay inside next to the air conditioner and read her comics, but her parents would kick her out and make her go outside. So she'd just read comics outside. Every afternoon though, she'd go train with her team. She did this for weeks until it was finally time to leave for New York City. Her mom cried. Her dad asked all the uh, annoying questions. Did you pack your toothbrush? Did you pack your comic books? Did you pack clean underwear? Yes, Dad, I got all that stuff. Margaret was getting on the team bus to head to New York City, and her parents embarrassed her by blowing kisses and wiping away tears. She got on the bus, hoping there was an empty bench. She didn't want to have to share it with somebody else. She didn't want to have to make small talk for two and a half hours. That was like her worst nightmare. She just wanted to be left alone and read her comics. And then her dream came true. There was one empty bench. She was so happy and relieved. She flopped down and took off her backpack. She got out a juice box and she put in her earbuds and she opened up a comic book. Life didn't get much better than this. Suddenly, the bus screeched to a halt. Margaret spilled juice all over her lap and she hit her head on the bus seat in front of her. The kids looked around and they were confused. And then Margaret looked out the window and she saw the captain of the underwater sweater knitting team. Now, 
The captain of the Underwater Sweater Knitting Team was the weirdest kid that Margot knew, or anybody knew for that matter. He would do things like drink an entire chocolate shake through his nose. He would do things like drip soda in his eyeball. He would do things like eat an entire bag of banana-flavored runts in one mouthful. He believed his Uncle Larry was the Tooth Fairy, and he walked around in giraffe slippers. His name was Ed. Ed forgot to set his alarm the night before, so he had slept in, and his parents drove him as fast as they could, but he missed the bus, and they were trying to catch the bus before it got on the turnpike, and they barely made it. So when Ed got on the bus, he was breathing heavy, but he was still smiling. Margaret thought, please don't sit next to me, please don't sit next to me, please don't sit next to me. Ed walked down the aisle, looked right at her, and say, said, hey, Margo, looks like it's just you and me. Margo's like, oh. Ed, please don't talk to me. I'm trying to read. Ed said, don't worry about me. I will be absolutely quiet. You won't hear a peep out of me. I will be 100% silent. Ooh, I like your backpack. Is that the sequin kind? When you run your hand over, it changes colors. Ooh, I like your jeans. Did you rip those yourself or did they come pre-ripped? Ooh, I like your headband. Are those real cat ears? Or Margaret said, Ed, stop. Please be quiet. I'm trying to read my comic book. Ed said, oh, oh, sure, sure thing. I will not say another word. Ooh, comic books. I like comic books. Did you know I tried to be a superhero once, but I couldn't find a cape, so I grabbed my sister's bathrobe and put that on? But it didn't look like a cape. It just looked like a bathrobe. So I got out the scissors, and I cut it into a cape shape, but it still didn't look authentic. So to make it more authentic, I cut out the letter Z right in the middle. And Margaret went, Z? What does the Z stand for? And said, Z for Ed... Duh! Margaret just looked at him funny. I said, anyways, I needed someone to save. But I didn't have anything to save, so I got my sister's pet unicorn. Margaret said, wait, your sister has a pet unicorn? Yeah, my sister calls her princess, but I call her Glenda Glitterpoop. Would you like to see her? And Ed unzipped his backpack, and he pulled out a beautiful plush unicorn. Margaret looked at her, and she did look nice. Ed said, Look into her eye. And for a moment, Margaret was enchanted. She thought, maybe unicorns really are magical. And she reached out to pet her, and then... Glenda made this terrible face and caused Margaret to scream! And she squirted juice out her nose, and all the kids around her started laughing. Ed said, where was I? Oh, yes, I had to rescue her. So first she had to be in trouble, though, so I put her up in this tree. But the problem with putting her up in the tree is I couldn't rescue her because I couldn't reach her because she was up in a tree. Margaret said, wait, Ed, you just said you put her in the tree. Ed said, yeah. Margaret said, if you put her in the tree, and if you put her up there, couldn't you reach her to get her down? Ed said, how could I? She was up in a tree. Duh! Margaret just rolled her eyes. Ed said, anyways, the only way I figured I could get to her is if I climbed up on the roof and jumped off the roof. But my mom saw it happening, and so she screamed from the second floor story window, and she threw open the window, and she reached out to grab me, but instead she just grabbed my ankle, which caused me to fall. But luckily, I landed on my dad's brand new grill. I ruined his grill, and the steaks he was making for himself and all his friends. But at least I'm okay. Margaret said, yeah, that's a great superhero story, Ed. And then Ed was quiet, which was weird because Ed was never quiet. He was always babbling on about something, but Margaret didn't complain. She figured he was just doing an Ed thing, like putting his head through the armhole of his shirt or tying a string around his ankle and flying himself out of the window like a kite. But he wasn't. Margaret finished her comic book and closed it up and put it in her backpack, and she saw what he was really doing. Ed was reading. And Margaret said, hey, Ed, what you reading? Ed said, shh, can't you see I'm trying to read? Some people are so rude. Ed said, I'm reading the Bible. Margaret said, the Bible? What's that about? Does it have any superheroes in it? Ed said, nope, better. Margaret said, what could be better? Then Captain Marvel, the mightiest Avenger. Ed said, Jesus. Margaret said, Jesus? Wasn't he just uh, an ordinary guy who taught about God? Ed said, Margaret, 
Jesus is God. Margaret said, wait, you mean like the God, like the one and only God? And said, yeah, like the God, the one and only God. Margaret said, well, I just thought he was like an inspirational leader, like a good example worth following. And said, oh, so basically you think Jesus is like Batman. You know, Bruce Wayne, no superpowers, really does he bring to the table? Can't fly, not a man of steel, doesn't have x-ray vision, can't thwip around the city, doesn't have super strength. He's just an ordinary guy with lots of money so he can afford cool gadgets and he's got some cool skills, but that's about it. So many people think of Jesus that way. That Jesus was an ordinary guy who had some good things to say. He was a teacher who taught people to be nice. He was a good example worth following. He had some wise sayings, or maybe he was a prophet about God. Ed said, but the truth is, Margo, Jesus is God. He claimed it, and he proved it. Margaret said, I didn't know Jesus claimed to be God. When did he do that? Ed said, all right, John 10. Jesus was walking on Solomon's porch. And as he was walking, he said, he made the statement, I and my father are one. And Jesus was talking about God the Father. And the people were so mad about it, they picked up stones to throw at Jesus. They wanted to kill him. Jesus said, well, what, for what good work are you going to kill me? And they said, we're not going to kill you for a good work. We're going to kill you because you are a human and you claim to be God. Margaret said, whoa, I didn't know Jesus claimed to be God. Ed said, yeah. He didn't just claim it, he claimed it, and he proved it. Margaret said, when did he prove it? I said, oh, you mean the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times that he proved it? He said, Margaret, Jesus changed water into wine. And I'm not talking about a magic trick with some food coloring. He actually changed water into a completely different substance, into wine. Jesus walked on water. He walked across the Sea of Galilee in the middle of a storm. Jesus fed 5,000 people with a kid's lunch, and when they were done eating, everybody was full. Jesus healed people who were blind and people who were deaf, people who were paralyzed and people who had leprosy. He healed them by his own power. Jesus cast out demons, that is, he commanded them to leave, and the demons had to obey him. Mark 2 tells us that Jesus has power to forgive sins, and Jesus, after dying on the cross for our sins, came back to life three days later. Margaret said, that doesn't sound like superpowers. Ed said, because Jesus is not a superhero. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. And Ed was reading in the book of John and he read to her John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. It's talking about Jesus. And the word was with God and the word was God. Ed said to Margo, Margo, Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. Margaret sat back. That's a lot to think about. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. She said it over and over in her head. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. All those things that Jesus did, nobody else has that kind of power. Even a uh, 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 actor in a cape in the movies, or even the scribbles on the page of a comic book that aren't even real, even though they're pretend they don't have that kind of power. Maybe Jesus is God. As Margaret was thinking about all of this on the bus, she fell asleep. Margaret drifted off to sleep, and she woke up when the bus pulled into the hotel parking lot. And the coach got up and said, all right, everybody, I want to give you some instructions. I want you to go to your rooms, and I want you to unpack your stuff. Then I want all of us to meet at the hotel restaurant for a late dinner. So Margaret went back to her room, and she unpacked her stuff. She put her clothes in her drawers, and she hung some things up in the closet. And Then she heard a scream, and she thought, this is my chance. And she ran to the bathroom, and she got a towel, and she flung it over her head, and she tucked it in the back of her shirt to be her cape. And then she jumped out into the hallway, ready for action. But there was nothing. She heard the scream again, but it wasn't coming from the hallway. It was coming from the room next to her. And the door was open a little bit. So she kicked open the door and she jumped in, ready for action. And she saw 
Ed. And he was screaming at his big toe. Here's what was happening. Ed was making an uh, ice and toenail sculpture. And he doesn't ever, he never clips his toenails. He always chews them. He had chewed his big toenail on his right foot down too low and he had gotten a hangnail. And he was screaming at the hangnail, Curse you, evil fiend! I shall bite you again! Margaret didn't want to stick around for that, so she left. She went back to her room and she took off the towel and threw it in the bathroom. She decided to head down to the hotel restaurant for some dinner. And she went to the elevator and she pushed the elevator down button and she got inside and she pushed the letter L. Now, for those of you that don't know, on an elevator, the letter, letter L stands for lobby, like the, the ground floor. But when she pushed it, she giggled a little bit because she thought of Ed because Ed thought that L stood for L-O-L. And once you pushed it, he thought you had to laugh out loud until you got to the bottom floor and then you could stop. Ed was so weird. Margaret found the team at the hotel restaurant, and she found a table by herself, of course, and she started looking over the menu. A few minutes later, Ed came limping in the restaurant because his big toe was still sore from the hangnail. He sat down, and he looked at the menu, and he was flipping it over and over and looking at it from all angles, and looked up, and he, uh, uh, the, the, the waiter came over, and the waiter said, what can I get for you, kids? And Margaret said, oh, I'll have the mac and cheese. And the waiter said, an excellent choice, young lady. Excellent choice. And for you, sir? He looked at Ed, and Ed said, Um, I, I think we're missing your fine dining menu. Where are your finer items? And the waiter said, That's the only uh, uh, menu we have, sir. Would you like the chef to whip up something special for you? And Ed said, Why, yes, my good man. I will have your finest peanut butter, onion, and ice cream sandwich. And the man was like, uh, an excellent choice, young man. Ed and Margot made small talk until the waiter came back with their food, and Margot was trying to eat her mac and cheese, but Ed's sandwich, she could smell it. It was making her nauseous. And Ed was doing this weird thing where his eyes were closed, and he had this creepy smile on his face as he savored bite after bite of his peanut butter, onion, and ice cream sandwich. Suddenly, a man with a mask came in the restaurant. He was holding a bag, and he was holding a gun. He ran to the woman who was behind the the, reg, the cash register, and he pointed the gun at her and said, Open it up now. And the woman was so frightened and so startled and so nervous, she couldn't get the cash register open. So the man pushed her out of the way, and he opened it himself, and he shoved the money into a bag that looked like it was mostly full already. Apparently, he'd been stealing uh, who knows what for who knows how long in the same exact bag. But just then, the hotel security came in, and he also had a gun. So the man in the mask kicked over a table, got behind the table, and put his gun out like this. By this time, the entire underwater sweater knitting team, including the coach, had gotten underneath the tables to hide. Except Ed. Ed still had that creepy smile with his eyes closed, eating that sandwich. And then the man with the mask began firing his gun. The kids were in trouble. What's going to happen to Margot and Ed? You got to find out next time in part two of Ed and Margot Go to New York City. Guys, I hope you enjoyed part one of Ed and Margot Go to New York City. Guys, I'm excited to find out what happens next. But until then, let's talk about our epic truth number one. So here's how you remember it. You hold up one finger. Epic truth number one. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. Say that with me. Epic truth number one. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. One more time. Jesus is God. He claimed it and he proved it. And our memory verse is John 1.1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Guys, uh, Ed and Margot Go to New York City is called a Christology for Kids because we're answering the question, who is Jesus? So I hope you guys will stick with me with all five parts. It's gonna be incredible. But until next time, Mr. Forrest, out. <laughs>